In this video I'm going to take a look at the autofill and autofit keywords as used with repeat notation. I've got a grid here with three column tracks and they're set to repeat three times one fraction unit which gives us these three equal width flexible tracks. What would be nice is if we could ask the browser to display as many tracks of a certain size as would fit into the viewport. And we can do that with grid layout. Let's take a look. So here I'm saying repeat three one fraction unit. If I was to change this three to the autofill keyword, I'm now saying autofill the container with as many one fraction unit tracks as possible. The thing is that one fraction unit takes up all the space, so we end it with one track. So let's change that to a fixed amount. So I've now said autofill as many 150 pixel tracks as possible. And if we change the size of the viewport, you can see what happens. But that does mean we've lost our flexibility. So could we combine the two? We could using min max. So if I now say min max 150 pixels 1 fr. What now happens is that after laying out as many 150 pixel tracks as possible, because our maximum is one fraction unit, any leftover space is distributed between the tracks. And so we end up with these nice flexible tracks, but they never go smaller than 150 pixels. There are two possible keywords here. We've got auto fill and auto fit. So let's have a look at the difference between them. I'm going to make the minimum much smaller. Uh, so we end up with a space at the end. So you can see what's happening here. When my browser window is small, uh, they wrap because they fill the viewport. And as we go wider, we do end up with this gap on the end. And that's because Grid is making tracks here, even though there's nothing to put in them. And that's what Autofill does. We get the tracks, and even if they're empty, they'll stay at this minimum of 50 pixels. If instead we use auto fit, you can see this now fills the viewport again. And this is because auto fit, if you've got some empty tracks at the end, it will just drop them, it'll collapse them to zero. And so you end up with the display actually filling the container as opposed to leaving a gap at the end. So it really depends what you're wanting to do with your grid whether you'll use autofill or auto fit, but otherwise they behave in the same way. You can use min max to create tracks with a minimum size and then a maximum so you can keep your flexible tracks.